Hello there, Nuage Classic Gamer here, and welcome back to Let's Play Sonic 3 Knuckles. And why are we back at launch base? How on earth are we back here? Well, the answer is really simple, actually. We're playing Sonic 3 alone. So, no Sonic and Knuckles attached, just Sonic 3. The half that came out before the other half. And why on earth would we be doing that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, to show off the extra boss that's only available in Sonic 3 alone, for Sonic anyway. And two, show off the ending for Sonic 3 alone. Because it's kind of different than the way it ends in um, launch base in Sonic 3 Knuckles. And yet again, riding the um, Eggman vehicle, Knuckles Falls, and we're still going to the same platform we fought the really super easy boss in launch base in Sonic 3 Knuckles. But this time it's kind of different because Tails isn't with you. He doesn't fly back down when you get um, to the platform. So that's one difference right there that Sonic 3 had instead of Sonic 3 Knuckles. But the boss that we're going to be getting into is so very, very annoying. This is, like, seriously my least favorite boss battle in Sonic 3. And I know I said something about the Marble Garden boss. No, this tops it. And it's especially horrible when you only have, like, three rings, because I've died many, many times this boss, I'm going to admit. So I am horrible at this boss. I'd rather play the Death Egg robot from Sonic 2 before I play this one, in all honesty. And granted, it's probably just because I suck at it, I just don't like the boss. But yeah, again, we have this Wimpy's boss. You do the same as extra as you did last time. Except no tails here to get a couple few extra hits, which is kind of disappointing. But yeah, you really want to hold on your rings um, at this point, because you're like, oh, don't worry about it. You don't have to fight any boss after this. Well, playing Sonic 3 alone, you need those rings. Because he flies away. Making you think you're all safe and whatnot, and then everything just goes downhill. Sky gets dark, music gets awesome, and here we are at Big Arm. The final boss for Sonic 3 alone. And the only way you can hit this guy is by hitting him in the actual pot itself. You hit the top of him, you hit the spikes, you hit his arms, he'll grab you and throw you to the ground. So you literally have only one area to hit him at. And it's very difficult to hit him when he only has like three attacks that he does. You can hit him while he's doing this, but you're probably going to get hit in the process, so it's not recommended. The only surefire way to hit him without getting hit is when he's swooping down to attack you like that. Insta shielding will be your best friend here because it's the best way to make sure you hit him. And then if he does two of those usually is the average. He comes from the top, he starts moving around left to right, and then he just drops down and he does that other attack where he swoops back and forth. And this boss really looks simple, but I have such a heck of a time trying to hit him because of those stupid spikes on top of his machine that I just don't enjoy playing this boss. It took me a lot just to actually go through with this boss because I tried this boss at least 10 to 15 times before I finally got it. It was so annoying. And this is actually a boss that made a return in Sonic Generations, the 3DS version, which is kind of odd because there wasn't really a Sonic 3 level, but they have a Sonic 3 boss. Well, then again, it is in um, Sonic 3 Knuckles... It's Knuckles' story, because in launch base you fight both bosses, which is really difficult, because Knuckles isn't very agile compared to Sonic. And we defeat Robotnik, the Death Egg becomes disattached from the platform, which somehow isn't causing Sonic to fall to his death. And the sky gets all cheery. It's a pretty simple, basic ending. It's not like, it doesn't feel complete, which it shouldn't because it's only half a game, but, you know... Because you see the Death Egg falling, and then it just, like, disappears in a flash of light. Which is just odd, because, you know, normally you'd see it explode. Not in this case, it just disappears. The Sonic's all happy, doing his finger wag. Tails is nowhere to be seen. Granted, this is a Tails and Sonic Tails file, and that's it. That is it for Sonic 3 alone. And now we're going to head on to Sonic and Knuckles, just to show off the intro where you're just playing a Sonic alone, compared to how it starts off with Sonic 3 Knuckles. So you start with Sonic, and you're just plopped right into Mushroom Hill Zone. No intro, no nothing, you're just starting at the level. Again, kind of odd compared to the awesome intro you got with Sonic 3, so... Again, it doesn't feel complete. But it is Mushroom Hill, there's just one extra area you don't get here that you get in Sonic 3 and Knuckles when you get to a Mushroom Hill Zone after you beat Launch Base. And we are showing that right now. Because Tails flies you in in this case, regardless if you're playing Sonic alone or Sonic and Tails. He flies you in. And this is a new area. This wasn't in Sonic and Knuckles alone. What is Knuckles doing in that area? What's he doing? Why'd he hit that switch to close the door? What's, what's going on here? Why is this happening? 
Well, guess what? We have seven more special stages to go through. Oh, I know, it's so exciting. But, we're in this weird area now. You can't see it because of the compression quality, I apologize for that. But the emeralds are flying away from you, the normal ones. And they're flinging off in different directions, and they are going to be landing in these giant pod area things with giant emeralds. And these are the super emeralds, which lead to more special stages. But for your convenience and mine, I'm going to speed them up because no one wants to see seven more special stages. And yes, we're getting them all in Mushroom Hill. So next part will be Mushroom Hill without any special stages, which I think will be nice. But there are so many freaking special stages in Mushroom Hill. There is actually, and I kid you not, eight in total in Sonic 3 and Knuckles together. If you're playing Sonic and Knuckles alone, then you only have seven, but regardless, you can get either Super Sonic or the reward for getting all the Super Emeralds in Mushroom Hill, the first level of the game. This is very similar to the way it worked in Sonic 2, which there were seven checkpoints to get all seven Emeralds. So, yeah, they make it really simple to get all the Emeralds in one shot. And I really do like this um, background with all the emeralds. It looks really cool. And I want to say that these special stages right here are quite literally the reason I've not LP'd this game earlier. I absolutely loathe Sonic and Knuckles special stages. And it's not because of the formula, because it's the same as Sonic 3 alone, but it's because of how difficult they are. The precise jumps you need to have, the precise time you need to have, especially when the stage speeds up. Now, this wouldn't be such a problem if you're not recording yourself, because, you know, oh, it's no big deal. But I would like to mention again that I have a slight delay when I'm recording, because of the DVD recorder, the way I record my footage. There's always a slight delay between the time I press anything on the controller and an action happens. It's so slight that I barely even notice it most of the time, but when the special stages come around, I notice it big time, because it really affects my jumps and turns. Because a lot of special stages require you to literally be on the top of your game at all times in order to get all the red spheres and not bump into a red one. And the very last special stage took me at least 10 to 15 times to actually get. So these are very difficult in my opinion. I'm sure other people are like, oh no, these are easy. You just have to do this and this and this. Well, I know. I can't knock the game like saying it's bad because of these special stages because I suck at them. I know other people can do them perfectly fine, I just don't like them because I'm horrible at them. And in total, these all these special stages took roughly two hours to get them all. Because I screwed up so many times, I kid you not, it took like quite literally two hours. And it wasn't very fun, and I'm kind of sick of special stages and Mushroom Hill. Even though I can't really be um, sick of Mushroom Hill because we have to go through it again. But the reward for getting all the Super Emeralds is totally worth it. No matter what character you're playing as, you get a really special reward for getting all the Super Emeralds. And, just random fact, all these special stages that you're seeing are the special stages you would get in Sonic and Knuckles alone. But you wouldn't go to the special area with the big Emeralds and the Super Emeralds and that, it would just be going to the special stage like Sonic 3. And of course, for getting all the Emeralds in Sonic and Knuckles alone, you'd get Super Sonic, not the special reward for playing Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles together. So in order to get the full experience and everything possibly to get in both games, you need to play them together. That's pretty much the whole point here. And I remember this especially distinctly because I had to go around the edge of the special stage before going in the inside. Because if I didn't, I'd screw myself up because the special stages speed up really quickly. And I'd always get so paranoid. That's what always screws me over is when I'm like, oh no, what should I do? And I always... Inherently hit like left or right for some reason. There's no reason for me to do it. It just happens and I run into a red sphere Gets really really annoying because every time you screw up I have to reset well every time I screw up not every time you screw up I always have to reset the system because otherwise it'll save my failure and I can't get a chance at a special stage again Because if you screw up a special stage like one of the rings and you save the game and you go back to it that special ring won't be reappearing it'll be gone. You have to go to a different one. Which is very, very annoying because resetting the system takes probably about a minute, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you keep screwing up and you're driven almost to the brink of insanity by these special stages, it really drags on your nerves. But we are almost done with these special stages, thank gosh. Because I feel so relieved now because these are done, don't have to worry about it, and just play the rest of the game 
in peace and with the awesome reward you get. And yeah, um, especially these Super Emeralds, they're supposed to be blinking right now, but again, because of compression and stuff like that, can't really see it, which makes me sad. And we're on to the last one, which looks really similar to the one before it. This was the one that gave me such a hard time. I This this one just drove me up the wall. Insane. And it doesn't look that difficult, because it isn't. It's just, I always freak out, because this one, it bumps you back, and you have to move forward. And I always seem to hit it either too late, or not at all, or something. And I always just mess it up for myself. Very, very annoying. But hey, you know what? We're done. All the Super Emeralds are done. And next part will just be Mushroom Hill. No special stages, no more. We're done with special stages. Sonic got all the Super Emeralds. And what is our reward for this awesome, awesome special stage compilation stuff? What do we get for that? It is a new form for Sonic, not Super Sonic. Much better. We actually get awesomely awesome Hyper Sonic who is a running seizure, which we'll be seeing next part because, you know, we're going to be running through Mushroom Hill. So, this is New Age Classic Gamer, signing off. Really hope you enjoy this. Next part's going to be a lot of fun. Take care.